When trying to come up with my 2024 reading goals, I started thinking about how last year I promised myself I would start doing the things I actually wanted to do. I saw Beyonce in concert, I went on a vacation outside of the country, and I started taking dance classes. All things considered, I had a pretty good 2023. So I thought, let's bring that same mindset to my reading goals for 2024. Let's get started. <laughs> So the question I had to grapple with first was, what do I actually want to achieve with my reading journey this year? I came up with three goals and 10 challenges to help me achieve those goals. Goal number one, I only want to own books I really love. This makes the most sense for me personally because I use the library. I would mentioned in my book to newbie tag, which you can find here, that I use the library a lot. I live in New York City and I have a New York public library card. I have a Queens public library card and I have a Brooklyn public library card. So goal number two, I want to actually write reviews for the books that I have read. I have a really bad memory, so I need to find somewhere where I can write that those thoughts down and revisit them whenever I need to, especially when I'm trying to do rereads of books. Goal number three. I want to keep being a professional student. That's really important to me. So for reading that translates to, I want to learn more about myself and the world around. me. So hopefully the 10 challenges that I've set up for myself will help me achieve those goals. Challenge number one, I'm going to do a version of Emily Fox's read it or unhaul it challenge. If you don't know who Emily Fox is, she has a YouTube channel here called books with Emily Fox. I'll link it down below. The challenge is essentially I have to go through my physical TBR to be read pile of books and I have to force myself to either read them or unhaul them. Emily does a, a funny thing where she pulls them out of a giant jar that she has. So if you want to check that out, definitely check out her channel. So I counted them and I have about 56 books on my physical bookshelf that I haven't read or I've only read certain parts of those books. So out of those 56 books, I pulled aside 30 and those are gonna be the ones that I'm gonna be pulling from this year. I didn't pull all 56 because my next reading challenge is read 60 books this year. I know myself and if I just included books that I already owned, it's not gonna be a fun challenge and I'm probably not gonna be able to succeed. So I did about half. Half of my reading goal for this year is gonna be trying to read books that I already own physical copies of. So I came up with the number 60 because according to my story graph, I read 49 books last year. I think adding another 11, is that math? Yes. Adding another 11 should be fine. Challenge number three, add my book reviews to the story graph. If you're not familiar with the story graph, it's an app and website that is a black owned alternative to Goodreads. I've been using it since 2022. I was using the free version. And this year I decided, let me take the leap. I paid the $50 for the plus subscription. I wanted to support and I wanted to see what the difference was between the free and the plus features. If you're interested in, in finding out more of that, let me know, I can, I'll be happy to make a story graph video for you. So this will help me with my bad memory. I don't plan on just dumping my thoughts into the story graph. That's gonna be more of a finished, polished, grammatically correct <laughs> review. I will use another program called Obsidian. If you're familiar with Obsidian, you know it's a, it's a markdown editor for taking notes. I don't do too many crazy things with it. I am going to be using it for keeping track of my initial thoughts and reviews inside of Obsidian. Then I'll go back and edit them for grammar and stuff, and then I'll upload those to the story graph. If you're interested in learning more how I use Obsidian to keep track of my book reviews, then let me know by writing in the comments below. Challenge number four. I want to read books from other countries. So this means that the author is from a different country and the book was written for a different audience than an American book audience. I feel like I tend to pick a lot of American authors or authors that write for an American audience. So I'm trying to expand my scope a little bit. If you have any recommendations of authors that you really love that write for other, that write primarily for a different book audience, let me know. Um, I would love to hear about them because I don't really know where to start. Challenge number five, read one Spanish book. Just one. I speak Spanish, but English is definitely the language that I'm the most comfortable in. I find that with time, I'm starting to lose a lot of the Spanish words. Like the other day, for example, I could not remember the word for tear. And I was like, I know this word. It's lagrimas. 
but I couldn't remember. So I don't want to lose my Spanish. And if I don't challenge myself to actively read in Spanish or actively look for media in Spanish, then that's definitely going to happen. So for this year, I'm going to start off with one Spanish book. I don't have one in mind also. So if you have any recommendations, let me know. I would, well, would like, would, well, would like, I want it to be short because I want to increase the chances of me actually succeeding and finishing reading it. Challenge six. I want to read more graphic novels slash comic books. I tend to really enjoy them when I do read them, but I don't really go out of my way to, to find them. So this is mostly because a friend of mine lent me, they're so heavy. <laughs> the first three compendiums of the Walking Dead comics, the be the last one, the dog that they have uh, ripped off the last page. So that's why it looks like this, but thank you. They're so heavy. So I'm going to put these down. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know, I love the Walking Dead. I know. I know. I know the later seasons are, you know, but it's my comfort show. I rewatch it at least twice a year. I am very, very, very excited about The Ones Who Live, the Rick and Michonne spinoff. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So now that the show, hopefully this is going to be the last spinoff. Now that the show is done, done, I feel like I can jump into the comic books. So that's why reading challenge number six. Reading challenge number seven. I want to read more nonfiction books. I really want to love nonfiction books. I listen to nonfiction on audiobooks, and sometimes that's a hit or miss because if the narrate if the narrator is not my vibe, then I will not finish the book. Challenge eight. I want to get closer to 50% audiobook, 50% digital slash print book. According to my story graph, I read 80% audiobooks and 20% digital books. That's because I listen to audiobooks when I'm doing chores, when I'm folding the laundry or painting my nails. My nails are horrible today. Sorry. I'm doing this not because I don't think that listening to an audiobook is doesn't count as reading. But more because I want to carve out some time during the day where all I'm doing is just focusing on one thing and that's reading a book. Goal nine. Again, with the 10 fingers, it's nine. It's nine. Goal nine. It's time. No. I'm going to read all of the Octavia Butler books and short stories this year. If you don't already know, I'm a big Octavia e. Butler fan. That's why I'm wearing this hoodie. For this video, my Parable of the Sower hoodie. I got this at Toshi Regan's birthday concert at Joe's Public Theater. Thank you to our friends who got the tickets for us. Toshi Regan and her mom, Bernice Johnson Regan, are two singers, musicians, artists who are trying to bring back their Parable of the Sower opera. They started it, I think it was 2005, but it got shut down by the New York City Opera in 2013 because they ran out of money. And ever since then, they've been trying to bring it back. This year when we went to the concerts, they had hoodies and I was like, this hoodie is so cool. Of course I'm gonna get one, like, come on. All right, back to Octavia. I've already read Parable of the Sower. Another side note, this book is set in 2024, y'all. So I've also read the Xenogenesis trilogy, which includes Dawn, Adele Hood Wrights, and Imago. I've read Kindred, I've read Fledgling, and I've read Unexpected Stories. I need to read Parable of the Talents, Blood Child and Other Stories, and the Patternist series. I have the Omnibus Seed to Harvest. I don't know where it is. That one includes Wild Seed, Mind of My Mind, Clay's Ark, and Pattern Master. My last challenge, instead of doing book hauls where I go and take you guys with me on a vlog and I buy a bunch of books, I was thinking of doing library vlogs where I go to a new library I haven't been to, borrow some books from there and then bring them back and show you what I found. Maybe we'll start with libraries in the New York public library system so that way I don't have to worry about going back to Brooklyn so quickly. It's Brooklyn. So those are my reading goals and challenges for 2024. Let me know in the comments if you have any reading goals you're trying to achieve yourself. Are you also trying to read more nonfiction books? Are you trying to finish all of the books from your favorite writer? How do you keep track of your book reviews? Do you just have a Google Doc? Do you put them in a notes app? Let me know. With that being said, I'll see you on another video. Bye.